Hello, I'm Adrian and playing fast, is there any point to this kind of thing? I think that fast playing has got a bit of a bad name for itself. It's seen as the preserve of shredders who play millions upon millions of soulless notes like some kind of dull gymnastic exercise and it's really easy to mock that kind of thing and it's equally easy to go to the other extreme where you take the more indie music kind of ethos where any kind of fast playing is showing off and you're being a muso and it's somehow not for real. But I think, in truth, fast playing can be exciting, it can be musically necessary, and as a player I think it's worth bringing your technique to the point where you're able to play fast when you need to. So for those times when you might need to play fast, this video is going to give you some easy ways to do it. Now, of course the word easy is subjective and I'm sure there will be some of you out there going, Adrian, dude, you said this would be easy but these licks are freaking impossible. And of course I'm not saying that this isn't going to take practice and hard work but I would say that these kind of licks are achievable to most people and that you don't need to have shredder grade technical prowess in order to be able to pull them off because that's certainly not something that I've got myself. Let's get to it then, I've got 10 licks for you, all of them based on a simple grouping of repeated notes and you will have heard this kind of thing in a million and one guitar solos. And in these licks we're mixing picked notes with a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs. And I think this is really the key if you want to play fast without having to put in 10 zillion hours of practice. I think one of the hardest things to do on the guitar is to play fast where you're picking every single note. That really is tough. But here we're going to remove those difficulties and we're going to let the fretting hand do a lot of the work. So I just want to make a few general points before we get into the specifics of learning these licks and the first one might seem a little bit obvious but I think it's worth making and that is if you want to play fast then it's best to start slow. I think the best way to practice these licks that I'm about to show you is slowly and deliberately. Pay attention to detail, make sure you're getting the picking absolutely right, make sure you're getting the fingering right and then I think speed is often just something that comes by itself if you're practicing in the right kind of way. My second point is I think it would be a really good idea to use a metronome when working on these licks. Metronome is obviously all about playing in time and if you're using a metronome then it's going to force you to play these licks rhythmically rather than it just being a random spasm of notes. And my third point is I think it's a good idea to use a clean sound when practicing these licks. It's very tempting I know to pile on the distortion and have these licks sound cool straight away but often what that does is hide your mistakes and inaccuracies. A clean sound is very unforgiving, you can hear all of the little details so if you get these licks sounding great with a clean sound then it will be the time to put on the distortion and they'll just start sounding even better. And this one is based on a four note repeated grouping. And incidentally, all of the licks that I'm going to be talking about are based on our old friend, the E minor pentatonic scale in position one. Just wanted to keep things nice and simple for this video. Obviously, once you learn the licks, feel free to try them with other scale types, other positions of this scale. But for this video, I just wanted to keep things straightforward. Now, the four notes we're dealing with in this lick are G at the 15th fret on the top string, and then E at the 12th fret, and then we've got D at the 15th fret on the B string, and then we're going back to E at the 12th fret on the top string. So, just repeating those four notes, and we're not picking all of those notes. The important thing here is the way that we're articulating them. We're starting with a pick note, 
and then there's a pull off to the note at the 12th fret. We're picking the third note and we're picking the fourth note. So we've got pick, pull off, pick, pick. Now, really important thing here is the way that you are picking this particular lick. And the way that I recommend you do it is start with a down stroke, got the pull off, another down stroke, and then an up stroke. So down, pull, down, up. Uh, there are probably some other ways that you could pick some of these licks, but I, I strongly recommend you, you go with my picking directions just because I think it's the, the best way to get these licks up to speed and flowing and sounding smooth. So that's the lick. And you can just repeat those four notes as many times as you want. And then when you're ready to come out of the lick, you can just kind of exit on on um, whatever note you like really. I'm just ending with a bend here at the, the 15th fret on the B string. So just a word about how you might practice these licks with a metronome then, which is, is certainly something I recommend. Um, there are a few ways you could do this. I've just got my metronome here. I'd suggest you start slowly and playing with an eighth note rhythm. So maybe start around 70 beats per minute, which sounds like that. And an eighth note rhythm at that tempo would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... something like that. So really slow, but it's, it's important to start like that and just make sure that everything is, is correct and in time and you're picking in the right way, you're using the right fingers. Then of course you can bump up the, the tempo. Um, you can keep the, the rhythm uh, as eighth notes and push up the tempo, but when you're ready, I think you can switch to 16th notes. And that would mean playing four notes per beat or per click on the metronome. So if I just set my metronome now at about 100, BPM and we're going to play 16th notes at that tempo and that would sound like this two three four something like that um, and then you can obviously just keep on pushing uh, up faster until till you reach your, your limit um, I mean, once you get beyond 120 BPM at, at 16th notes, that, that's getting into uh, you know pr pretty quick territory. Um, I think my, my limit's probably you know, around 150 or 160, but let me, let me just try 150. So the lick at 150 would sound like this, two, three, four. What we've got here is really just a variation on lick number one. And rather than just repeating those same four notes over and over, we're just occasionally adding in a double pull off and that just adds a little bit of variety to the lick. So we've got our four notes and then you can go you know, sometimes just do that 15 to 12 pull off uh, a couple of times and you can do that in kind of a, a random manner um, you know, repeating go, going between the four note grouping and then the double pull off lick um, or you can make it a bit more predictable and as I've got it written the the pattern is this we're doing our four notes twice we've got an extra pull off and then we've got our four notes again. And then we've just got 15 to 12 pull off at the end of the bar, just to make the number of 16th notes up to a bar. And then the whole thing repeats. So in time, we've got three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And 
likewise you can end that one with a bend at the 15th fret. And again, this is closely related to the first lick. It's really just another variation. This time we're adding in one more note. We're playing an F sharp, which is found at the 14th fret on the high E string. And we, we're now dealing with a six note grouping. So we've got a pull off from 15 to 12, then another pull off from 14 to 12. Then we've got 15 on the B, 12 on the high E. That's our six note grouping. I'm picking that, starting with a down stroke. It's down, pull off, down, pull off, down, up. Again, you can end with a bend at the 15th fret on the B string. Now you can just repeat those six notes over and over or you can do what I've done in this lick as written is that I've made it fit into one bar and then just repeated the, the pattern of notes. So to, to do that what you'll need to do is play, play the six note grouping and then repeat it and then have the 15 to 12 and 14 to 12 pull off. Uh, that way you've got a bar's worth of 16th notes which will then repeat. So we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This one is again based on a six note grouping and this time we're including the G string as well. So the six notes we're dealing with are that the 15th fret and the 12th fret on the top string, 15, 12 on the B string, then 14 on the G and 12 on the B. And the picking is, is similar to previous licks. We've got down, pull off, down, pull off, down, up. And I've got some different fingering options here. I think I like to play three and one, three and one, and then reach over with finger two to catch that A note there. And that just seems to work smoothly for me at speed. You can try doing it all with one and three if you wanted to, um, or you could get your little finger involved as well. So that's our, our six note repeated grouping. Again, you could just repeat those six notes over and over. I'm kind of making the lick conform to, to one bar's worth of sixteenth notes. So to do that, I'm playing six notes, repeating, and then just the two pull-offs. So And then once again, you can end either with a bend or maybe with a slide up to the E at the 17th fret on the B string. And we're back to a four note grouping here, but we're spreading it across three strings. So we've got the 12th fret on the top string, 15 and 12 on the B, and then 14 on the G string. And the picking is slightly changed here. I, I like to start this lick with an upstroke. So we're going up and then down, pull off, down. Up, down, pull off, down. Now with this lick, it might feel slightly odd to be starting a lick with, with an upstroke. There's something um, kind of not natural about that, but it makes sense just for the way the notes are organized in this lick. I think if you start with a with an up That the last note of, of the the group of four is a down and then that sets you up for, for an up again on On the top string it just just seems to, to, to flow naturally for me when I do it like that And 
once again, repeat those four notes as many times as you like. Uh, I'm just ending on the E note, uh, 12th fret on the top string. And it's another four note grouping. And this time we've got a hammer on and a, a pull off combined. So the four notes are 12, 15, 12 on the top string, and then 15 on the B string. And we're picking the first note, and then a hammer on, pull off, and then pick the fourth note. And uh, picking wise, this is another lick that I like to start on an upstroke. So you go up, hammer, pull, down. Up, hammer, pull, down. And again, the reason for that is it just sets you up picking outside this top pair of strings. So I'm coming up on the high E string and then down on the B string. And to, to me, that's just a, an easier way to get up speed than starting with a down and then doing an up on the, on the B string. So um, there's the lick. Again, exit that lick however you want. I suggest perhaps just playing that E note again on the top string. And this is really just a variation on the previous lick. We're taking that basic idea and then moving it across the string. So it's starting with the same four note grouping from, from lick number six, uh, which we're repeating twice. Then we're doing exactly the same thing, but on the B and the G. So I'm including here this, uh, this B flat note here. It's a non pentatonic note, but it's the, it's the flat fifth. So it's kind of a blues scale note, which I think sounds nice. Uh, then we're moving the same idea onto the G and the D. This is at the 12th and 14th frets, just to make it conform to the, the E minor pentatonic scale. And then I'm ending the phrase. I've got 12th fret on the G, pull off 14, 12 on the D, 14 on the A, and then hammer from 12 to 14 on the D to finish. So that the picking is the same as, as licks, lick number six. We're starting with the up and then down on the next string. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down and then on that last bit, probably up, down, down, up. This is really just a combination of two of the previous licks. It's literally just lick six followed by lick five. And it just illustrates how once you've had a bit of a mess around with these kind of repeating licks, it's actually quite easy to combine them, mix them together and come up with these kind of compound licks. So what we've ended up here is an eight note grouping. We're literally just playing lick number six and then straight away into lick number five. So we've now got eight notes, which we're then repeating. The picking is exactly the same as in the, the two individual licks. So you're starting with an upstroke, hammer, pull, down, up, down, pull, down. exit the lick uh, on, on whichever note you like really, but I think I'm ending this one on the B note at the 12th fret on the, the B string. And 
things getting slightly more complex here. We've now got a 16 note repeated grouping, but once again, it's, it's using a previous lick. So we're starting off with lick number eight, pl played exactly as before. But then we're adding on some more notes. We've, we've now got a hammer on from 12 to 15 on the B string, 12 on the top string, pull off from 15 to 12 on the B, 14 on the G, then hammer on from 12 to 15 on the B. So that's the second half of the lick. Put that together with the first half and we have The way you pick this is super important to getting it to flow, I think. So I'm going down, hammer, pull, down, up, down, pull off, down, up, hammer, up, down, pull off, down, up, hammer. Uh, seems quite complicated, this. Um, it really is just a case of kind of programming this stuff into your picking hand at a really slow speed and then gradually pushing up the, the tempo. Okay kids, the final lick, this is lick number 10. And this one's a, a bit of a monster, this is a 16 note repeated grouping, but it's all based on the previous lick, on lick number nine, and we're just moving that across the, the string set. So we, we start off just playing lick nine exactly as we, we just learned it. And then we're just doing exactly the same thing, but we're now starting on the B string, and we're just making all of the notes conform to the E minor pentatonic scale. So we've got... Um, And then we're doing that one more time, but starting on the G string. And then just to round the lick off, I'm doing this. So just departing from the, the pattern a little bit, I've got 12, 14, 12 on the D with a hammer on and pull off. Then I'm sliding from 14 to 12 on the A, pulling off to 10 and then 12, pulling off to 10 on the low E, finishing 12th fret on the low E. So that, that's the entire lick. Picking is exactly the same as lick number nine, we're just moving it across the string sets. One thing to, to watch out for in this lick, and in all of the licks really, is just the evenness of the rhythms. There's a um, there's always a tendency with hammer-ons and pull-offs to slightly snatch them a little bit, um, particularly at speed. It's something I, I notice in my own playing and something that I need to work on myself. But do strive to keep that even eighth or sixteenth note rhythm as you're working these licks up to speed. So there we have it. I hope you have some fun learning to play these licks. Feel free to adapt and adjust them to your own purposes. I think I've only just scratched the surface of what is possible with these kind of repeating licks in this video. So try things like moving them to different string sets, to different scale patterns and scale types, different keys. There are really all kinds of possibilities there. Music and tab to these licks will be up on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.